Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today as we talk about a great question. Should I buy a new home before selling my old one? Now, before we can answer that question together, we need to ask answer the first question that really should be asked, which is, am I able to buy a new home without selling my current home? The most crucial aspect of your ability to get a mortgage is what's called your debt to income ratio. Now, I'm not a mortgage expert. I did stay at a Holiday Inn last night. I don't think that's funny. I don't even know if that's relevant anymore. <laughs> so anyway, it doesn't matter. So your debt to income ratio, it's relatively simple. How much money do you have coming in every month? How much money do you have going out? So for example, let's say you bring in $5,000 a month and you have a current mortgage of $1,500 a month, a car loan of $500 a month, and school loans at $500 a month. Uh, your incidentals like groceries, restaurants, cell phone bills, those kinds of things, they're not factored in when it comes to your debt to income. So in this scenario with $1,500 of mortgage, $500 a car loan, $500 school loan, and that scenario, that's a total of $2,500 a month in debt. If you've got $5,000 coming in, that means you have a 50% debt to income ratio because half of your income is being spent on debt every month. I hope that makes sense. Half of the money you have coming in is going right back out to debts that you have to pay uh, and, uh, and that are going to be consistent every single month. So why does that matter? Well, let's say that you had the scenario above, and uh, as we talked about before, excuse me, where you wanted to uh, try to buy a new home, maybe without selling your current home, uh, and, and no mortgage lender is going to give you a, 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 excuse me, no mortgage lender is going to give you a second loan without selling your current home because your debt to income ratio is too high. So if your debt to income ratio is 50%, already with just one home, you are not going to be able to get approved for a second mortgage without selling your first house because you have too much debt. You need to get rid of that $1,500 of debt every month, which is your current home, sell that in order for you to get approved for the next house. It's not super common for a mortgage lender to loan you money if your debt to income is above 50%. So, you might not be able to purchase without selling first. That's a conversation that you need to have with your mortgage lender. We've got a bunch of wonderful lenders we can connect with, connect you with. So if you can purchase though without selling, then I do think that's a good decision. Again, all of this is hinging on a conversation with your mortgage lender. How much money do you have coming in? How much money do you have going out? And then the question is, based off that number, can you purchase a new home without selling your current home? Sometimes you can't. Sometimes we have to sell. Maybe you can rent it. There's a lot of variables there that we can talk you through, but sometimes you are approved to say, yes, you can purchase a new home without selling your current place. If that's the case, I think that actually is a good decision, and I'll explain. It takes a little bit of the urgency and stress off of the entire process. You have more freedom to make a decision. You can be a little more level-headed with the sale of your current place since you don't feel the pinch to sell uh, or you can uh, or, or to not, not move forward on your purchase, uh, meaning you have the stress and the stress off of you and the freedom to say, you know what? I don't feel like I'm forced to sell this home because this is a house I really like. That's a big positive. And if you're moving forward on the purchase of a new home, but for whatever reason, you start to feel uncomfortable about it or decide it's not the right fit, you can walk away. Now, if you've got to sell your home also, and you're trying to do everything at once, it does put a little more pressure on the process. So if you are able to buy without selling, I do think that's a good uh, idea. I think that's a good decision and one we would want to talk with you through. Now, one word of caution though, if you are going to buy without selling first, make sure you give yourself as long of a runway as possible to sell your home before you have a double mortgage payment. One trick to do is to try and close, meaning you sign all the paperwork, take ownership of the home, try to close on your new home early in a month. Let's say it's October 7th. Since your first mortgage payment on your new home is always deferred the remaining of the month that you close and the following month, that means if you close on October 7th, your first mortgage payment is not to due until December 1st. So that gives you almost two full months to sell your old home and avoid a double mortgage payment. So again, 
Having the right real estate agent on your side is crucial to making that happen and making it happen in the best way possible to protect you. But there are a lot of factors in here that can make a difference. If you are in Southeast Virginia or know someone in Southeast Virginia or someone moving there, we'd love to help. Reach out to us today. Our contact information is below, maroongroupva.com. We'd be happy to help. No matter where you are, make sure you talk to your mortgage lender to figure out your debt to income. Make sure you talk to a good agent who can accurately walk you through the process. If you're concerned about finding a good agent and you're somewhere other than Virginia, reach out to us anyways. We'd love to connect you with someone we know nationwide who's going to take good care of you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you have questions or just need more help, we're happy to do it. If you want to know, should you buy a new home before selling your old one? Thanks so much.